Is there any reason you shouldn't move to Spain? Look, moving to a new country is one of the most important and biggest decisions that a person will make in their life. When I moved to Spain, I took on a new career, I made new friends, I, I learned new hobbies. It was a massive shift. I've met and spoken to a lot of people who have moved to Spain and who are planning to move to Spain. And I've identified six areas where people have gone wrong or are at risk of going wrong in their move to Spain. Today, I'm gonna run through these six different areas for you and I'm also gonna offer a takeaway way or two for each area so that you can kind of get back on track once you've confronted this, this potential issue. Inga, let's go. Okay, first up, guys, are you willing to put in the hard yards to use a, a Kiwiism to learn Spanish before you come here and to keep learning it once you're here? And I don't mean fluent. Fluent is an overused term. I mean functional, having a functional level of Spanish. That means being able to read newspapers, watch the news, make friends, talk to people, read Spanish literature and books and, and learn about the, the culture and society and engage in the culture. Look, I made a massive mistake when I moved here with Yoli, my, my wife, who's from Spain. I thought just by being here and just living here, particularly with a Spaniard, would mean that Spanish would come to me naturally. Let me make this really clear. A language never comes naturally unless you're a baby. You have to put in the work. My growth in Spanish was a little bit stunted because I didn't put in the work at the beginning. There are so many tools that are out there to help you learn Spanish. There's just so much available. And in the description box below, I've put a link to some of the, the tools that I recommend. But one of the most important things, if you have the money to do is before you move to Spain, is to start paying for tutoring. You could get an online, you know, through Zoom, you can get tutored. That is just the best way to kickstart your Spanish and then fill it out with reading and listening to music. And then once you get to Spain, continue with your tutor and look at doing an intensive course, an intensivo, where you actually literally go to Spanish class for, you know, five hours a day for maybe three weeks. Really, really important. So here's the takeaway. If you're moving to Spain, start learning Spanish yesterday. There is just no way around the fact that you have to put in the hard work. And the sooner you get onto it and the better your Spanish is when you get here, it will just open up the entire country for you. Trust me, your experience will just be so much better. Guys, I know it's hard, but please start learning Spanish. It's the biggest tip I can give you. So one thing I recommend to anybody moving to Spain or even traveling to Spain is that they open a WISE account. Now, WISE is a service that I use. It's a fantastic service and they're sponsoring this video. So what is WISE? Well, it's a few different things. First, it's an international account for over 50 currencies. It's a way to do super fast and cheap money transfer. It's a debit card that operates in multiple currencies. And it's also a way to have a bank account in up to 30 different countries so you can get paid in those countries. Imagine you're moving to or traveling to Spain from the US. WISE really opens up a lot of flexibility with how you manage your money with that move or with that travel. For example, WISE enables you to transfer your US dollars to euros at an excellent exchange rate. Then once you're in Spain, you can use your WISE debit card to spend those euros. Or if you're moving to Spain and you have a Spanish bank account, you can transfer those euros into your Spanish bank account. All along the way with WISE, you know all the costs, all the fees. Everything's super transparent on the homepage. You can see what you're gonna pay. Not like, you know, with old school banks where you're not quite sure what the money exchange is gonna be, what the transfer is gonna cost and all that kind of nightmare. I'm a big fan of WISE. So if you're a bit of an international person like me and you're curious and you wanna learn more or open an account, click the link in the description below and let's get on with more things that you need to think about for when you move to Spain. While I was preparing the course, I spoke to a couple from the US who a few years earlier had moved to Malaga. After a year, they had had to move back to the US because they had underestimated their tax obligations You know, once they would be living in Spain. And here is something that I can't stress enough. Before you move to Spain, you need to understand what your tax obligations will be and what your tax exposure will be. And this is especially important for two groups of people. One people who are moving later in life, retirees who have a nest egg built up, maybe they have a mix of savings and some investments. You need to understand how the fact that living in Spain and being a resident in Spain and being a tax resident there on your worldwide income is gonna be impacted by all those investments and savings. Two, this is especially important for Americans because as you Americans know, regardless of how long you live overseas, you will always remain a tax resident of the United States uh, as long as you're a citizen of the United States. 
notes. What does this mean? It means you need to pay for tax advice before you move to understand all these things. And don't make the mistake that, the kind of mistake that I fall into, thinking I can kind of do it all myself, where you dive into the many blogs about taxes in Spain or Facebook groups and try, you know, open an Excel and try and figure out what your tax obligations are yourself. Now, if you have no money or very little money or, you know, you, it's not complex, then maybe you'll be able to figure it out. But really, it does pay to get advice here. And two other important points here. Do not freak out about the wealth tax in Spain before you have reason to freak out. Yes, there is a wealth tax in Spain, but guys, I have seen simulations of millionaires that end up having to pay 60 euros a year. There are some areas of Spain where you don't have to pay any wealth tax and there are a number of deductions. So you really have to have a lot of money for it to be an issue. And two, remember that living in Spain, your cost of living is quite likely going to be cheaper than where you're moving from. You know, health insurance is going to be cheaper if you're coming from the States, for example. Just literally cost of living, property taxes, all those things. This is going to balance out any extra tax you need to pay. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway is that you want to find a tax expert based in Spain who ideally understands the taxes uh, of your home country, who can do a tax simulation for you. A tax simulation is saying, well, you know, these are likely to be your obligations and your exposure to tax once you live in Spain. How do you find that person? Well, the Facebook groups, the many, many Facebook groups that expats are on in Spain are a great way to get recommendations. Just don't ask people for you know advice on doing your taxes yourself because you need a professional, trust me. Okay, immigration. Now this is an important one just like tax. Don't move to Spain until you have clear what your visa route and your visa plan is. That means that if you're a non-EU uh, person or national from a th what we call third country, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, US, that means that you need to understand one, what visa is gonna fit your situation and your needs and what the requirements of that visa are and the limitations of it. And two, what your renewal plan is. A lot of people forget that second one, what your renewal plan is. I was lucky when I moved to Spain, I just married Yoli, uh, my wife. Not everybody has the, the luck to meet a wonderful Spanish uh, partner, but I do often see people trying to fit round pegs into square holes when it comes to their visa route and visa plan. For example, you know, they're moving here on the non-lucrative visa, but they plan to work. Now, there are a lot of people who are working while on the non-lucrative visa, you know, doing digital remote work and things like that. It's illegal too coming here to work and you know run your own business or you know blog or be a youtuber and trying to do it via the self-employment visa and the self-employment visa doesn't really fit a lot of the things that people want to do when they come here for work a lot of that sort of entrepreneurial stuff now here is the big issue we have what i call right now in spain a visa gap that means people who do want to move to spain who want to work maybe as YouTubers, <laughs> or want to work as a digital nomad or work for a company back home and pay their taxes in Spain and live in Spain, everything like that, there's not really a good visa for you right now. There is a startup law that's coming which has a, a portion of it that is dedicated to digital nomads, hopefully coming this year, 2022. We'll see how that pans out and hopefully that resolves that gap and closes it. And the other important point is that once you get your visa, it will give you residency for a certain amount of time, maybe a year, maybe two years. And then if you want to stay, you're going to have to renew your residency, usually based on the original terms, the same terms as you originally got residency on. A lot of people forget about that. They just get over the hump of getting here and don't think forward to their renewal plan if they do plan to stay here, you know, for a number of years. So what's the takeaway here? Doing your own visa homework is easier than doing your own tax homework. You can go onto blogs and, and Facebook groups and understand the visa requirements and do it all yourself. But if that feels a little overwhelming or your cases and situations a little bit complicated, I suggest uh, talking to an immigration lawyer based in Spain usually who can help you and understands all the different visas that are available. Now here's the thing, you can pay for a lawyer to do your entire visa process uh, and apply and everything like that or you can simply pay for an hour of their time and ask a bunch of questions. So that's a middle path. You do it yourself, but you get help from an immigration lawyer. So as you can see, there's a few different paths there that you need to consider, but please do think about it. Do get it right. Okay, next one. I get emails and messages from people who ask me if they think their, insert their profession here, will allow them to work in Spain. You know, I'm a chef. Do you think, James, I'd be able to find work in Spain? And here's the thing, depending on what your career is, it can be really challenging to find work in Spain uh, and or to find well-paid 
work in Spain. Look, when I moved to Spain, I actually changed careers. I was in advertising when I was in New Zealand just before I moved here. And when I moved here, I switched into tourism. Usually in this country, when there's not a pandemic, tourism is an industry that does well, but it just goes to show I did have to make a change. This whole topic is also connected to the question of your visa and to your level of Spanish. Remember, you gotta start learning Spanish. So depending on your visa and your residency will dictate whether you can work or not. And your level of Spanish, the higher your Spanish is, or the better your Spanish is, will open up more opportunities to work in Spain because, well, this is a Spanish-speaking country. Now, if you only speak English or have a low level of, uh, of Spanish, there are options. You can work uh, teaching English, you can work in tourism, or you can work for, you know, there are in Spain startups that are based in Spain but are really serving an international audience, and often they work uh, in Spanish. And actually, Devour Tours, the food tour company that I co-founded, became that. We don't just have tours in Spain, we have tours around Europe. So in a sense, you don't have to speak Spanish to work at Devour tours. But remember that there is systematically high unemployment here in Spain and that there are a number of jobs that are not well paid or are precarious. So if you are looking at coming here and you want to continue your career or get into a certain career, you've got to do your research first. Do not just move, you know, blindly. You can talk to recruiters, you can get on LinkedIn, you can join Facebook groups and find out what the, the market might be like in, in your industry. Another option is to come here as a tourist for a few months and really see what it's like on the ground. You know, nothing beats actually being here and seeing what the job opportunities are like. Meet some people in your industry. So what's the takeaway here? Guys, first, make sure that your visa and residency allows you to work. And two, you have to make sure that you have a plan A for making money and a plan B and maybe even a plan C. Okay, so I think it's really important before you move to a country to have a pretty clear-eyed understanding of the, the culture, the society, and, and a little bit about the politics and what's going on in that country. That way, you know what you're getting yourself in for, and you're gonna be more engaged when you get there. In the Move to Spain Masterclass, we had a number of people from the United States who, in part, were looking to move to Spain to, to escape the, the political climate in the United States, the negative politics, and the sense of social division going on there, which raises the question, is Spain a, a, a country, a paradise of, of political stability and social cohesion. It is true that there's fantastic unity in a lot of areas in Spain. For example, there's wonderful pride and trust in our public health system, which in part has led to the really high vaccination rates here during the pandemic. But here in Spain, we have also experienced a rise of the extreme right. We have a political party here called Vox that are, you know, typically anti-migrant, homophobic policies, climate change deniers, you know, the full catastrophe. And sadly, statistics show that hate crimes are on the rise in Spain from 2014 to 2019, there was a 30% rise in reported hate crimes. Now, part of that may be awareness, certainly, around the ability to report these crimes, but certainly there's something going on. Regarding gay rights, I have a friend uh, here who's American, who's gay, uh, and he believes that people back home in his country, in the United States, have a bit of a rose-tinted view of what uh, gay rights are like here in Spain. Spain is famous for being one of the first countries to legalize gay marriage, but what he's found, he's experienced homophobic attacks in Madrid, and while the laws protect him, he struggled to get taken seriously by the police. And he says to people back home in the States, look, there's a gap here between what's on the law books and what is being enforced in the street. So what's the takeaway here? Certainly it's not, oh my God, Spain is, is a disaster zone, don't move here. It is that in, a, in what feels like in what is a more and more divided world, don't expect Spain to be this, this, this island of peace that's free from all of this. You know, it might be better from where you're coming from, or it might be worse uh, depending on the different issues. But I would say that, you know, treat moving to Spain as an opportunity to move here to understand the challenges that Spanish society has and engage in them. This is a chance for you to move here and engage in Spanish society and fight for those causes that are really important to you. When we move countries, it's really tempting to think about the ways in which you're gonna change. You know, the extent to which you might have a personal reinvention. You might start thinking about which parts of you you're gonna hold on to and which parts of you you're gonna shed. And it makes sense, it's normal. Moving to a new country can be a chance for some sort of personal reinvention, certainly of aspects of your life. You know, I know when I moved here, I learned a new language, I changed careers, I took on hobbies and interests that I wasn't interested in or, or engaging in in New Zealand. So it did happen, but I have always 
always struggled with low level anxiety. In New Zealand, I struggled with low level anxiety. And in Spain, I still struggle with low level anxiety. That didn't change. I think maybe I thought on visits to Spain before we moved here that it would be more relaxing and maybe I would be more relaxed and, and the anxious part of me would, would dissipate a little bit. But yeah, there are aspects of life in Spain that are more relaxing and other aspects that aren't more relaxing, maybe even less relaxing. And so it's important to be clear-eyed about these thoughts. Look, when you move countries, most things about your life will change, but most things about you will probably stay the same. So what's the takeaway here? Your life might be better once you move to Spain, but it will still be a life with all the joys and challenges, all the ups and downs that come with the life. And this is not a negative thing. This is about setting your expectations in a certain way so that they're gonna align with what the reality is when you're here and you're gonna have a richer and more rewarding and more satisfying experience once you do move to Spain. But having said all of that, guys, Spain is an incredible place to live. I've got a delicious plate of food here. I've got a medieval convent behind me, everything that I love. If you're curious about the Move to Spain Masterclass where we tackle these challenges and give solutions for them, you can click the link in the description box below and you'll get a notification, uh, an email from me next time we have an intake. Apart from that, let us know what you agreed with and disagreed with in this video uh, in the comments below. I'm curious. This is obviously, you know, a big topic. I look forward to seeing you in Spain. Ciao.